Thanks very much, Jane. I don't know if you've worn that green shirt for a reason today, but um, for all the women in the room, I'd like to wish you um, happy International Women's Day. It is the centenary of International Women's Day today and a time for us to reflect on um, the achievements of the women in the past and to celebrate the achievements of the women of today and in the future. But not only is it this year the centenary of International Women's Day, it's actually also the centenary of the year that the women first had the vote here in Victoria. You remember that in 2008 we celebrated the centenary of women's suffrage, but on the 16th of November 1908, that was actually the first day women in Victoria got to vote. So we also celebrate the centenary of that this year. Can I say what a pleasure it is to be here to launch um, this edition of Parity? Um, when I first came to be the opposition spokesperson for housing, um, just over four years ago now, um, homelessness was something that I knew very little about. I'd been fortunate that I'd grown up in a family, in secure housing, in a family where our home was a haven, a place where you were um, loved and educated and nurtured and um, in a very secure environment. So homelessness was something that I had to learn about and it was for many people in this room that I learnt about the issues that do surround um, homelessness. But it was also the parody magazine that arrived regularly at my office in Shepparton that um, actually taught me a lot about homelessness too and about the services that are delivered here in this state um, to assist uh, to assist those with home, who are suffering from homelessness and also about the policies um, moving forward that we can use to, um, to help to solve homelessness for many people. So it is really exciting to be here um, to launch this edition. I've been the Housing Minister for 97 days now and I guess in that time, although I was shadow for, for four years and knew a lot of the, the problems that existed, I didn't re actually fully comprehend the depth of the problems and I'm learning certainly about how complex and, um, and important the housing portfolio is and I have to tell you that I don't take that responsibility lightly. Um, I want to be a good housing minister and I want to see us help people in Victoria who are um, suffering from homelessness and from um, insecure housing. Unfortunately we have a huge um, challenge facing us. There are 39,212 applications for public housing in this state, which is quite a number. Um, of course, there are tw uh, more than 20,000 Victorians who um, are experiencing housing in, uh, homelessness in Victoria, and we learnt that from the last census, and we're hoping to see a reduction in that figure as we um, move forward with the um, street to home projects and also with the white paper, the government's white from, uh, federal government's white paper on homelessness. Um, our figures indicate that in 2009-10 um, the funded homelessness services in Victoria provided housing establishment funds to 36,000 households. Um, there were transitional housing management tenancy services provided to 6,246 households and homelessness support um, was provided to 38,000 cli clients, including 19,768 children. And I think that's a particular area that we do need to, to concentrate on, the children um, that, su that are suffering because of homelessness with their families and really concentrate on trying to con keep those families connected to their communities so there's continuity for the children with their education and with their networks in their communities. My particular challenge is to develop new and better approaches to the delivery of public and social housing as well as homelessness and family violence services which will start to tackle these problems. And this has been reflected in the government's policies priorities, which include increased employment, education and training opportunities and accommodation, particularly for young people and people with mental illnesses, improving housing outcomes for vulnerable individuals and families, including people, um, again, people with mental illnesses, and reducing the pressure on acute and clinical services through better case coordination, increased employment opportunities for clients and the provision of specialised housing for vulnerable people. The government has proposed the creation of three purpose-built 40-unit uh, youth for accommodation and training facilities as well as, um, we will, as piloting work and learning centres on five um, public housing sites. 
And we've already had um, the City of Greater Geelong express an interest in having one of our work and learning centres um, located down in the, in the cryo Norlano area and the Committee for Geelong have come to us and said if we can train the people, they'll supply the jobs. So what a great outcome that would be for the people in that area. These models will build on confidence and security of young people and adults to seek employment and to build their life skills and pathways for themselves and their families. What we need to do is break the cycles of disadvantage and give people the opportunity to make a better life for themselves and for their children. I'm working closely with my departmental staff on new directions for responding to homelessness and reducing its incidence in Victoria. Partnerships with the community sector, other government departments, business and philanthropic groups are critical to achieving this aim. I'm very excited by the opportunities that exist in my portfolio to continue to work with all of you to provide services to Victoria's most vulnerable people. To achieve reductions in the number of people experiencing homelessness, we need to systemise changes that, so that clients receive the right response at the right time and the, uh, from the right service system. I'd like to thank those people who have contributed to this important edition of Parity. I know many of you are here today and will be speaking later as well as participating in the workshops. Since 1988, Parity has been increasing awareness of the issues related to homelessness at a national level. I think Parity is incredibly valuable and I'm very pleased to launch this edition. Earlier I mentioned a few of the government's policies priorities and it is clear that Street to Home approach dovetails with them particularly in the terms of improving the understanding across government and the community that homelessness is everyone's business. I was really interested to read about the experiences of practitioners implementing the street to home model in other states, overseas and also closer to home. I was particularly moved by the story of Stella, an Indigenous woman in Melbourne who had slept rough intermittently for 10 years. As a result of the Street to Home program, Stella is now housed and is accessing the related community and health services we know are so vital to a person's well-being. She is also working towards having her daughter live with her again. Alongside the hu human stories, this edition of Parity highlights the importance of sharing best practices and I know there will be much useful discussion here today. Thank you for inviting me along and I look forward to working with all of you as the Minister for Housing and to continuing to have dialogue with your organisations. Thank you.